Nitroglycerin is a drug used to treat chest pain that can be administered via several routes, through an IV, a sublingual tablet, a patch on the skin, and so on. Each administration route has specific facts that you, as the nurse, need to know. In this mnemonic, we'll cover all the important facts about how to administer nitroglycerin so you'll be ready come test day. A woman is sitting in front of a cafe waiting for her date to arrive. The woman ordered a nitro coffee to sip on while she waited. You know, the type of coffee that's infused with nitrogen to create a nice, smooth texture? Since she's drinking the coffee at the cafe, the woman was served her nitro coffee in a glass cup. This glass of nitro, or nitro glass, is our symbol for the drug nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin belongs to a drug class called nitrates. We cover general information about nitrates in a dedicated video. But because there are so many important facts to know related to the administration of nitroglycerin, we've made this video specifically about that. Before we get into each specific route, there is one fact that is applicable to all routes of administering nitroglycerin. We've drawn this symbol near the nitro glass in the foreground. This woman's date is running late. Since she doesn't want her iced nitro coffee to get warm, she's protecting it from the heat and light of the sun with an umbrella. The way this woman is protecting her coffee from the light can help you remember that all forms of nitroglycerin should be protected from light. Nitroglycerin is a relatively fragile medication that easily breaks down and loses its effectiveness. Prolonged exposure to light is one way to inactivate nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin often comes in dark colored packaging to protect it from light. Additionally, you should teach your patients to store nitroglycerin at home in a cool, dark space. Following these instructions will help ensure that the patient receives medication that is effective. Next, we'll go through the specific types of administration routes. Let's start with the quickest way to administer nitroglycerin, through an intravenous or IV infusion. We've grouped all the symbols related to the administration of IV nitroglycerin around the window of the coffee shop. The cafe has a sign in the window that says, I need a coffee IV. You know how sometimes people joke that getting coffee through an IV would help them be less tired? Use the IV on the poster to help you remember that here, we're talking about giving nitroglycerin through an intravenous infusion. IV nitroglycerin is given in a hospital setting and used for immediate chest pain relief. These next few symbols will help you remember important administration information related to IV nitroglycerin. Through the open window, another glass of nitro cold brew is being poured. The coffee is in a glass bottle because glass has less chemicals than plastic. Plus, it keeps the nitro coffee tasting fresh. This glass bottle should help you remember that IV nitroglycerin comes in a glass bottle. Nitroglycerin should be infused directly from the glass bottle into the patient, as opposed to transferring it into a plastic infusion bag or syringe. This is because it reacts with and absorbs into several types of plastics. Using a glass bottle ensures that the patient receives the correct dosage of nitroglycerin that is uncontaminated by plastic. The nitro coffee is pumped out of the glass bottle and into the cup using this special tubing. The cafe's barista claims that this way, it doesn't disturb the nitrogen gas as much and keeps the coffee's smooth texture. Notice that the special tubing still has the tag, showing that the barista got it on a special sale. This special tubing should help you remember that IV nitroglycerin requires special tubing. Like I mentioned earlier, nitroglycerin reacts with some plastics, including the PVC plastic that we typically use in our IVs. For this reason, there is special tubing required for administration of IV nitroglycerin. The nitroglycerin routes we'll cover next are the sublingual tablet and the translingual spray. When given in this way, the drug is absorbed through the oral mucosa, which refers to the surface lining inside the mouth. To keep things organized, we've clustered these symbols to the right of the scene. It looks like the woman's date is about to arrive, but first, he freshens his breath with a mint. To help it dissolve quickly, he puts the mint right under his tongue. Use this sublingual mint to help you remember that nitroglycerin comes as a sublingual tablet. After all, sublingual literally means under the tongue. To be extra fresh, he also sprayed his mouth with breath freshening spray. Look at how he's directly spraying it onto his tongue. Use this tongue spray to help you remember nitroglycerin also comes as a translingual spray. Both the sublingual tablet and the translingual spray have similar administration steps to follow, so we've grouped them together here. In order for the mints to freshen your breath, you have to let them dissolve inside your mouth. 
That's why there's a notice on the mint tin warning people not to swallow the mints. Just like you do not swallow breath mints, nitroglycerin administered sublingually should not be swallowed. Instead, sublingual tablets should be placed directly under the tongue and allowed time to dissolve and absorb into the oral mucosa. Similarly, the translingual spray should be sprayed directly onto the tongue. It should not be swallowed or inhaled. The man came with some friends who are seated at the table nearby so that they can eavesdrop on his date. They've ordered coffee and are snacking on chips and salsa while they wait for the date to begin. One friend took a bite of the mild salsa. Because she had a full mouth, she gave her friends a thumbs up, as if encouraging him to order it on his date. Notice that the salsa has a mild burn in contrast to something more spicy. The mild burn salsa, along with the girl's thumbs up, can help you remember that a mild burning sensation in the mouth is normal. Nitroglycerin tablets and spray often cause a slight tingling or burning sensation in the mouth. This is completely normal and expected, and in fact, is a sign that the medication is fresh. Another friend was eating salsa when he suddenly experienced an episode of chest pain. Luckily, he has his chest pain pills with him at all times. The way he is taking pills to treat his sudden chest pain should help you remember that the sublingual tablets and translingual spray are both used to treat acute chest pain. Acute chest pain is chest pain that comes on suddenly. The first dose of nitroglycerin should be taken at the first indication of chest pain. The patient should not wait until the chest pain becomes more severe. The man keeps three doses of his chest pain meds in this cute pill case, shaped like the three little pigs. The three pill slots here represent how the patient can take a maximum of three consecutive doses of nitroglycerin. In fact, there is a specific procedure the patient should follow when taking these three doses to treat chest pain. Let's cover this in our next symbols. This cafe has a sign out front telling customers to expect to wait five minutes to be seated. Similarly, you should wait five minutes between each dose of nitroglycerin. One more symbol and then we'll put this all together. Five minutes after taking the first dose, the chest pain hasn't gotten any better. A friend at the table is calling 911. This guy needs to get to a hospital. The way he is calling 911 after the first dose should help you remember to call 911 if the first dose is unsuccessful at resolving the chest pain. Putting these facts together, the patient experiencing acute chest pain should take a dose right away and then wait five minutes. If he is still experiencing chest pain five minutes after the first dose, he should call 911 and take another dose. If after another five minutes he is still experiencing chest pain and EMS has not arrived, he can take a third and final dose. Remember, the maximum is three doses. These instructions are very specific and very important for your patients to understand. Questions about this come up a lot on tests, so be sure to review this information. While calling 911, the friend is also checking the expiration date of the salsa. After all, the man had chest pain right after eating the salsa. The way the friend is checking the expiration date should help you remember to teach your patients to always check the expiration date of their nitroglycerin at home. We've mentioned previously how nitroglycerin is a relatively fragile drug that easily breaks down and loses effectiveness. For this reason, it has a fairly short shelf life before it needs to be replaced. Resources vary on exactly how often nitroglycerin should be replaced, ranging from three to six months for the sublingual tablets and one to two years for the translingual spray. Instead of memorizing an exact number, just be sure to check the expiration date printed on the bottle and replace the drug when necessary. The last administration route we'll cover is the transdermal patch and the topical ointment, both of which are absorbed through the skin. We've clustered these symbols in the middle of the scene. In front of the cafe, a salesman is selling some nitro coffee-infused beauty products. His personal favorite is the transdermal patch. You can see he's wearing one now on his arm. This can help you remember that nitroglycerin can be administered via a transdermal patch. Transdermal patches are placed on the skin and the medication is absorbed through the skin and into the bloodstream to have a slower, more long-lasting effect. For this reason, transdermal patches are used to treat chronic chest pain. The young man also sells a wide variety of lotions, creams, and ointments that you apply to the skin, all nitro coffee-based, of course. Similarly, nitroglycerin can be administered as a topical ointment, meaning an ointment that is applied to the skin. 
Like the patch, nitroglycerin topical ointment is also absorbed slowly through the skin to treat chronic chest pain. Because they are absorbed slowly, the transdermal patch and the topical ointment aren't effective in treating acute chest pain. The man is giving out samples of his products, and to keep things fun, he brought this rotating wheel. Spin the wheel to see where to place your new nitro patch. Use this rotating wheel to help you remember to rotate application sites. This means that the patch or ointment should be placed on the skin in a different spot with each application. Doing so will help prevent skin irritation. In anticipation of his next customer, the man is putting on gloves. This way, he can help apply the patch or the ointment while still remaining sanitary. Use these gloves to help you remember to wear gloves when applying nitroglycerin patches or ointment. In these forms, nitroglycerin is absorbed through the skin, and as the nurse, you don't want to absorb any of the medication yourself. Always wear gloves before handling a patient's nitroglycerin patch or ointment. Returning to the Nitro Coffee skincare booth, every customer who is given a patch will also receive some important instructions. The first is on this pamphlet where it tells you to remove the patch at night. After all, these Nitro Coffee infused patches have caffeine and you don't want extra caffeine at night when you're trying to sleep. Just like you should remove the Nitro Coffee patches at night, nitroglycerin patches should be removed at night. They are then reapplied in the morning and worn throughout the day. A nitroglycerin patch should not be worn for more than 12 to 14 hours at a time. The second instruction for the nitro skin care is found on the packaging of the patch and the ointment. They are to be applied to hairless areas of the body. Similarly, nitroglycerin patches and ointment should be applied to hairless skin. Hair can cause the patch to not stick as well and the medication may not absorb fully into the skin. So, when deciding on where to place the patch or ointment, you will want to avoid choosing hairy areas. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's recap. Nitroglycerin is administered via several different routes. Each form of this medication should be protected from light. Intravenous or IV nitroglycerin should be directly infused from a glass bottle using special tubing. Nitroglycerin that comes in a sublingual tablet or translingual spray should not be swallowed, but instead be allowed to absorb into the oral mucosa. A mild burning sensation may be felt in the mouth, but this is a normal and expected side effect. Both the tablet and spray are used to treat acute chest pain and should be taken at the first indication of chest pain. The patient can take a maximum of three doses, waiting five minutes between each dose. If the chest pain does not go away after the first dose, the patient should call 911. Since both the tablet and spray have a short shelf life, it's important to always check the expiration date and replace the drug when necessary. Nitroglycerin can also be absorbed through the skin via a transdermal patch or a topical ointment to treat chronic chest pain. When given in this way, the application site should be rotated to prevent skin irritation. Always wear gloves when handling a patient's nitroglycerin patch or ointment. The patch is applied once a day and then removed at night. And remember to apply the patch to a hairless area of skin for optimal absorption. And now we're actually done with nitroglycerin administration. See you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.